Hey Hazel, are you there? I took the afternoon off from work because I have some urgent matters to handle at home. Could you please take care of the paperwork on my desk for me? Is that all you have left from work today? Yep, you got it. I couldn't get around to it today because I was swamped with meetings. I've got something super important that needs immediate attention. Honestly, I don't think anyone else in the office can handle it as well as you. Mind taking care of my paperwork? Probably wrap it up before you call it a day tonight. I'm sorry. I was already asked by Sebastian to do some things for him. So, I'm afraid I won't have time to help you with whatever you have left over. But I'm sure that there are some other very reliable people here that you could ask to help you. No way. Sorry. I'm already out and I don't trust anyone else with my work. Seems like everyone's busy too. I see. But, like I said, I also have my hands full at the moment. Hey, I bet Sebastian's work can wait till tomorrow. No biggie. But mine needs to be done today. Do you understand? How about you wrap up my paperwork before you jet off tonight and then take Sebastian's stuff home to handle before going to bed? If you do that, we'll get everything done on time for both me and Sebastian. Even if I start your work first, where are all the documents and resources that you said were sitting on your desk? I just walked in and there was nothing. Not even in the drawers. Oops, my bad. I actually took them home by mistake. <laughs> Silly me. Sorry about that. Darn it, what do we do now? Can you at least make progress with those documents? I'm confident someone as capable as you can handle it. Thank you for all the compliments. But I can't really get started with any of the work if I don't have any of the data to input. There's nothing I can really do now since you have all the resources that I would need with you. Come on, how many years have you been working for this company now? I can understand this behavior from someone freshly hired in, but not from you. I've been here for four years, but how does any of that relate to how I can start any of this paperwork without any information? Seriously? Four years on the job and you still can't get it right? How do you expect to climb the company ladder if you can't figure things out without a few papers? Look, my experience or career goals aren't the point here. You, taking all the documents home, created a problem. Without them, I can't complete the paperwork. Unless you want me to make up numbers, it's impossible to proceed. Sorry, if you had left the documents on your desk, I could have helped. Better yet, finish your work beforehand next time. Hold on, are you implying it's my fault? Seems like you're getting a bit confrontational, huh? This is a responsibility that comes with the job. You're expected to assist and support me without questioning it. I don't think that's part of my role here in the company. Maybe you could have better planned your work schedule to complete everything in advance. Does that make sense? You knew about the important task ahead, right? I've got more going on than just sitting at my desk all day, you know? It's not just me. Others have non-work stuff too. They might need your assistance when they have to rush home. I'm offering you a chance to do something different. I'd really appreciate your help. Don't pass up on my offer, all right? I don't get why I should worry about how much you'd appreciate me doing your job. It's not like you're my boss. Wow, you're being seriously rude. Just so you know, I've been with the company longer than you. You should respect that and do as I ask. Quit wasting time and get to work or I'll escalate this to upper management. I'm sorry, but I won't be able to complete your work today. It's not my responsibility to cover your lack of responsibility. You should seek assistance from someone else in the office. Please understand that I've already declined multiple times. So it's time to accept that. Come on, Hazel. I'm bringing this job up specifically to you and only you. Shouldn't that make you feel special or something? Perhaps you can work from home since you have all the documents with you. Just put off whatever you're doing right now and get my work done. Why don't you just start taking my work as the priority around here? No matter how many times you ask, some things are just impossible. But if you give me a heads up next time, I might be more open to helping out. Now, I have to get back to work. Enjoy your afternoon at home. Are you kidding me? You're going to hear it from me when I see you next. Hey, are you listening to me?
Wow, you've scored a great position in the company, huh? You're the one leading the training for all the new hires now, right? Sebastian insisted I take this position. Honestly, I wasn't keen on it and didn't expect to be his top pick. Being in charge of new hires doesn't change my status. We're still equals. <laughs> That's why I sarcastically said it. I bet anyone you train will end up as spoiled as you. And just like before, you chose to talk back instead of doing the work I asked. Then you vanished, leaving me hanging. First of all, I didn't leave it unfinished. Secondly, I informed you that I couldn't do it as you took everything home. Plus, I had my own tasks to handle. And I did let you know about it. I already told you that Sebastian's task had nothing to do with what I asked. His thing could wait till the next day, but mine had to be done that night. I specifically said to finish it before leaving. So, talking back and leaving it untouched was unacceptable. If newbies learn your selfish ways, this company will be in deep trouble. Train them like responsible adults, okay? No more of that petty BS you pull. I get it already. But just in case I'll say this. I don't have any plans to follow through on what you keep telling me. You never know when to zip it, huh? Were they actually convinced you were fit for that role? I bet if they let someone like me handle training, we'd have competent employees who know their stuff. Well, maybe that's why the higher ups picked me. Why don't you go ask them why they didn't choose you? And while you're at it, tell them how much better you'd be. What are you trying to say? Are you trying to say that I can't do my job right? I didn't say that, did I? This is something that our higher ups decide. So just leave me alone. Man, you are really starting to piss me off. Recently, you've been really speaking to me with a terrible attitude. It feels like you're always trying to speak to me like you're my higher up or something. Didn't you enter this company much later than me? I don't think there should be any reason for you to act like you're my boss. Well then, please excuse my behavior. I never meant to make you feel like that. Hey, hey, this isn't something you can just sweep under the rug with a simple apology or anything. You need to come see me in person and beg for my forgiveness. I want you to act like you're the one that needs to shine my shoes from now on. It's not wise to talk to me that way. If the training supervisor finds your language inappropriate and reports it, you might end up in their office for a serious conversation. Consider this your only warning. See, this is exactly what I mean. I'm not digging your new attitude. Don't expect me to just let it slide. Be ready for what's coming your way. Hey, where do you think you're off to? We're having a special welcome party and I know it's not done yet. I can feel myself catching a cold. So I thought it would be a good idea to head home. A simple cold? You'll be fine. They say idiots don't catch colds, right? No one says that. But go ahead. Call me an idiot if you want. Pouring freezing water on me at the party is not okay. Save your excuses. I already told Sebastian. Now, enjoy the rest of the party. So, you're really just gonna bail, huh? I think you should be here to greet the cute new hires, don't you? Do you honestly believe you're qualified to train them? I highly doubt it. The only person that doesn't actually need to be there is you, Benjamin. It was just some spilled water on you. Is that really a reason to abruptly abandon everyone? Are you intentionally tarnishing our company's reputation? There are even a bunch of people from upper management here. I'm not trying to mess with the company's image. Why do you keep trying to make me feel bad for something that you caused? Is it because you don't like me? Did I do something wrong to you in the past? You're even asking me what you did wrong? How could you not already know that? If you have a reason for this, then I want to know. Otherwise, you continuing to talk down to me is only going to make me more frustrated with you. I couldn't care less if you get frustrated or shed tears. And you know what? I used to be in a biker gang before joining this company. Everyone here knew about it when they hired me, so they didn't dare mess with me. When they learned about my past, they froze in fear, unable to do a damn thing. Have you ever heard of the biker gang, Hell's Bells? I was the vice president in our gang's chapter. Is that so? Until now, I kept that a secret from you. 
but you're so irritating that I can't help but threaten you with what I could do. I might have to call my old boys to deal with you. Are you committing an attempted crime right now? You're threatening to assault me right now? Isn't it obvious? This is payback for dissing me and blowing off my work. If you're really leaving now, watch your back walking these dark streets late at night. I got around 200 peeps in my crew, ready to do my bidding. <laughs> well, if that's the case, I have nothing better to do than call the police and let them know of this. The police? <laughs> if you want to call them, then by all means, let them come. Before they can even try and stop us, we will have already ruined your life. My boys will be able to pick you out of the crowd so easily just by seeing you call the police on them. Then I guess there's no point in calling the police. But what if I were to call some people that are a lot more hardened than your boys? And who exactly could that be? I doubt you know anyone higher than a Hell's Bells chapter's vice president. A small fry like you won't find anyone to defend you. You'll probably slink home, defeated and silent, then cry on mommy's shoulder. <laughs> Besides, do you think you'll still have a place in this company when you come in next Monday? You'll already be fired by then. Fired! Why would I be getting fired? I already told you. It has been decided. All I have to do is say the word, and some nobody like you will get fired easily. It'd be best if you started looking for a different job at this point. When you see how far you've pushed me over the edge, you'll be begging for my forgiveness on your knees. Hey, hey, who are these people? Are these people that you know? Why are they all gathered in front of my house like this? Oh, I see you finally made it home. You've gotten home earlier than I was anticipating. What? What is all of this about? Who are these thugs? They're from the biker gang. Instigators MC. But I'm sure you've heard of them considering you're part of the Hell's Bells, right? Or at least you should know what symbol on the back of their leather jacket is. Wait, what? Why? Who are you? I'm the daughter of Instigators MC's leader. That's who I am. When I told my dad that I was being threatened by a member of Hell's Bells, he was not only surprised, but pissed off. I told him all the details of exactly what you said you'd do to me. From there, he told me just one thing to make me feel better. Let's go pay him a visit. He then told me the location of where all the members of your chapter lived. What does he mean by that? My father has my back. And he probably did this to ensure you won't be a problem for me. By the way, he mentioned bringing you a present. He'd also want to know why I got fired on Monday. And I'd tell him the same thing. It was because of you. What the hell? I don't need any present from him. If he wants a reason for why you were fired, he should take that up with the company, not me. Huh? I thought you were the one that fired me, right? If we were to ask the company why, there probably wouldn't be a reason given to us. Well, no matter who did it, my father would still really like to talk to you in person. I also thought that I would change my clothes and come see what happens. But it seems like you made it home before I could get there. I'll only be a little bit longer. So could you wait around for a little while, please? Don't come anywhere close to me, you psycho. Stop all this shit now. Go back to the hole you crawled out of. Then am I still fired from the company? I won't let them fire you then. I'll take back my words, so just stay away from me. Thank you very much. But the problems you've caused don't stop there. Next on the agenda is getting back at you for throwing cold water on me at the party. That was a simple joke, don't you think? Just a small prank. Oh, I see. Then I guess you won't be apologizing to me for that one then, huh? No, I get it. I'm really, really sorry. Please, just go back home now. Please just leave me alone. Why are you getting all frightful all of a sudden? We haven't done anything to you. Yet. Yet? What are you planning to do to me? Unfortunately for you, that's a secret. By the way, finding your house was a bit of a hunt for us. 
you lying about being the vice president of Hell's Bells made it quite difficult for us to track down your actual address. What? I wasn't lying about that. You said that you were one of the top dogs, right? But when we asked them, they said that you're nothing more than their errand boy. I guess you never expected anyone to go asking about your rank within their chapter. You must have misunderstood them. Which one of them said that about me? The actual vice president said that to us. But do you not agree with him? Since when did I get pushed out of my position by that little chicken Benjamin? Is what he said to us while laughing. What? But wait, you guys actually went to our base? Yep. Both the president and vice president know about the lies you've been spreading now. Some of your gang has come to us to chat, so we know each other pretty well at this point. No, there is no way. This can't be real. Didn't you also say that you had some 200 people working under you as their vice president or something? That was just a joke, you know. You really thought that I was clueless when you were making all this up. It seems you really made your gang look bad. Well, actually, you made yourself look like an idiot. No, I wasn't trying to do that. I had no intentions of any of that. And I also remember you saying that I should be careful and watch my back on the way home from the party that night, right? But I think you had that all backwards. I think you meant to say that you need to watch over your own back when going home, right? Wait, please just hold on. What the hell are you going to do to me? I'm not going to do anything to you, but that all depends on how you start to act around me. Then what should I do to make you calm down? I'll do anything for you, just please forgive me. Well, if you insist, how about you quit? What? I want you to quit. I want you to leave the company and never come back. Don't even think about coming back. What are you saying? There is no way you can force me to leave. I'm not asking you if you can leave or not. I'm making you leave. Wait, how will you make that work? I just had a word with Sebastian about your actions not too long ago. And actually, we've been talking about what we're going to do with you for quite a while now. Also, we've been told by other employees that they were also worried about having you stay in the company and such. It really has been our minds whether to fire you or not fire you. It's been a very tough discussion that we've been having amongst ourselves. Then, even if I don't choose to quit, I'll be fired? Well, that seems like the gist of it. Honestly, it looks like you throwing water on me today at the party was your final stake in the coffin. My condolences. <laughs> That's why I said I'm sorry. Haven't I said that enough to you already? And as for the company, do you think they'll be able to get rid of me that easily? There is absolutely no reason for it. I've been working for the company for so many years now, giving all of my time and effort for it. Firing someone isn't as difficult as you might think it is. People that are of no use to the company can simply be let go without any real issues. That's how it is for pretty much any company out there. Who are you calling useless? You are, Benjamin. You are. How many years have you been working at this company again? Eight. No, I think about nine years now. You've been here for that long, and yet you're still nothing more than an ordinary employee. I guess that's what happens when you only care about getting your own work done and not worrying about your co-workers. I've heard that you've always pushed against any requests from your higher-ups to help with other work. If that's the case, then I can see that there is truthfully no point in keeping you within the company at all. Oh, shut up. You can't fire me for something like that. Firing me is going to be a huge mistake. You're really taking this well, I can see. Where is all this confidence in yourself coming from anyways? Does it matter why I'm so confident in myself? Would you rather try fighting with me when I'm all burnt out? Well, it would make more sense to me if you were a little bit more humble about this. I mean, you seem to have a terrible attitude about everything, and you never tend to get your work done. And you're at the bottom of the ladder with the gang you seem so proud to be in. Do you like to use the fact that you were in a biker gang past the age of 30 as a way to get off? If I were you, I'd be more embarrassed by my life. <laughs> you need to stop messing around with me right now. 
If I were to put all of my effort into it, I could turn out just like you, using the biker gang to get anything you want just because you're the leader's little girl. What are you trying to look tough for at this point? You've already done for, and there is no way you can lie your way out of it this time. Do you seriously not understand the situation you're in right now? And don't act like you'll be able to run away and hide in some hole from us. We'll be able to immediately find out where you are and pull you out. Uh, please, oh wait, calm down. That's not what I meant by that. Then what did you really mean by that? It seems you've had a pretty tough time trying to get your point across today. I'm not going to say anything else then. I promise that this will be the last you hear from my mouth. Just please forgive me and don't fire me. Well, that isn't exactly something I can decide, remember? That's something the company gets to decide. So you wasting your time here, trying to get me to forgive you, will do nothing to save your skin. Before, you were saying that you were in on the decision. I said that? I just said that I was helping Sebastian and the other higher-ups by talking them through what you've been doing. Are you trying to blame your incompetence and inability to act like a decent human on me? I'm not incompetent. I have only been telling them the facts. The fact that you didn't get into the position of training the new hires, and the fact that you never were given any sort of important project from the company. That was all your fault. What did you say? That is not the case at all. I'm confident that you've been lying to me even now. Huh? Why did I have to be the one to try and talk some sense into this absolute idiot? Don't you realize that members of a gang don't have all that much free time on their hands? Would you just do us a favor and come out of your house? What? Why? Did my apologizing not make it into your thick skull or something? <laughs> That's the attitude you're going to take with me right now? I totally heard your so-called apologies. We just want you to hurry up in making the decision. If you don't want to be dragged outside, I would choose to not only quit your job, but also never come face to face with me again. Wait, please. I can't make that decision that quickly. Oh. Well, then I guess you're leaving me to make that choice for you then. I'm texting them right now to kick your door in and drag you outside. What? All right, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to quit my job and I'm going to make sure I never step a foot near you again. So please, for the love of God, just forgive me. Ah, then in addition to that... I want you not only to apologize to the company for all the trouble you've caused, but I also want you to apologize to all the employees you harassed by trying to act all cocky. But how? When you have done something bad to someone, you say, I'm sorry. Hell, even preschoolers know how to apologize to someone. A good gentleman like you shouldn't have any reason for not being able to say sorry, right? I suppose. Well, if you really can't figure out how to do it, I wonder what will become of you. Oh, but you already know the answer to that, don't you? Understood. I will do everything you have asked. Now please, just forgive me. I've put my hands up and everything. I'll take your word for it then. But if you don't keep this promise, you can imagine what's going to happen to you. I get it. I will definitely keep my promise. I will. Before Benjamin got the news of his termination, he announced his resignation to everyone. He apologized for the trouble caused before leaving, except he didn't apologize to me. So, I took it upon myself to catch him before he left and said, Good work today. His face went pale, and he hurried out of the building. We won't delve into the details as we all understand the impact he had on us. One thing we agreed on was our relief that he finally left. The downside was taking on Benjamin's workload, leaving no time to help others. But it's a small price to pay for removing such a verbally abusive employee. Thankfully, the office atmosphere improved after his departure, motivating me to work even harder.